Hi there. So we'll be starting with the second chapter of derivatives that is valuation of contingent claims. As the name suggests, we are going to talk about the derivative contracts, you know, which, which are based on some contingent event. So here we'll be talking about options first, all right, because options in itself are based on some contingent events that if the normal stock price, you know, touches the exercise price, then, on, then and then only the payoff would be, you know, be there for either the long party or the short party. So we'll be talking about those things here, all right. Uh, the first thing first to value these contingent claims or value these options, the first model that we are going to use is the binomial model. It is just an extension of what you studied in level one, all right, while you were using the binomial model to calculate the value of the call option and the put option. In the very same way, we'll be applying that. But here we'll be learning for both the European options as well as the American options, all right. So wherever early exercise is, you know, beneficial, at that point in time, we'll learn about the American options. But yes, first thing first, we'll be talking about uh, the European options. And in that case too, we'll be talking about one period model rather than a two period model. Because uh, first we'll start with the first one period model and then slowly we'll progress to the two period model. Here. So uh, let's start with the question directly. All right, first we'll understand the basic terms and then have the question directly. So S0 is nothing but the current uh, stock price. U is the up factor that uh, in one time period, how much do we expect the stock price to increase? Um, by what factor? D is the down factor that, you know, in the very same time period, how much do we expect the price to go down? Pi U is the probability of the up factor or probability of the stock going up. Pi D is nothing but the probability for the stock to go down. All right. S plus is the increased stock price after that certain time period. S minus is the decreased stock price after the certain time period. And RF is nothing but the risk free rate. All right. The Pi U and Pi D that we are going to use here are nothing but the risk neutral probabilities for the stock to go up and down. All right. Uh, U, which is the up factor, is calculated or is ha or has a relationship with the down factor as follows. Uh, U is equal to 1 upon D. Or we can take the D here or and the U here. So we'll get the formula for the down factor that is D is equal to 1 upon U. All right. Uh, there is definitely a relationship between pi U and pi D. That is nothing but the sum is equal to 1. All right. So the formula for the same thing is given as follows. Pi U plus pi D is equal to 1. Uh, next thing uh, next thing that we need to understand is how do we calculate pi u. So pi u is calculated using this formula 1 plus rf minus d upon u minus d. All right, 1 plus the risk free rate minus d that is the down factor divided by up factor minus down factor. Once we have pi u, all right, once we have pi u, uh, then we can calculate pi d. Pi d is calculated as 1 minus pi u. All right, so that is how this thing works out. I'll be taking an example here and we'll understand how exactly to calculate the value of a call option and a put option. All right, so the example goes as follows. We have a strike price at $30. We have a stock price at $30. The risk free rate is 7%. The up factor is 1.33. This up factor is for one year time period. All right, that, the, that we're expecting the stock to go up by 1.33 times in one year time period. All right. And right now we'll be working on European options and then later on we'll be working on American options. So uh, right now the current stock price is uh, $30. At time period one, we expect the stock to go up by 1.33 times. So we can multiply 30 into 1.33 to figure out the price here. So that would be 30 multiplied by 1.33, approximately $40. And likewise, we can see how much the uh, stock will go down. For that, we need the down factor. So the down factor is calculated as D is equal to 1 upon U. That is nothing but 1 upon 1.33. That is 0.75. So 30 multiplied by 0.75 will get the price of the stock here. That is 22.5. All right. So we have the price uh, in the upper side and as well as the lower side. Now we need to figure out what exactly will be the value of the call option. All right, first thing first, I'll be working on the call option and then I'll be working on the put option. So uh, when the stock price has touched $40, we need to see the payoff for the call option. So the exercise price that we have is $30. The current stock price is $40. So $40 minus $30, it is nothing but $10. All right, that would have been the payoff for the long call party. All right, the person who has the right to buy. Here, since the stock price has gone below the exercise price, I would not really be exercising. So my payoff would be nothing but zero dollars. All right, I have the payoff here. I have the payoff here. Now, I need the probabilities 
by which you know I can have a payoff of ten dollars, and at the very same time the probability which will give me a payoff of zero dollars. So for that we need to figure out the probability and use this particular formula. That is one plus the risk-free rate. That is nothing but zero point zero seven minus the down factor. That is nothing but point seven five divided by u minus d. That is one point three three minus point seven five. All right, so that would give me the value as 1.07 minus 0.75. That is 0.32 in the numerator divided by 1.33 minus 0.75, 0.58 in the denominator. So that would be 0.32 divided by 0.58. That is 55. All right, so 55 percent is nothing but my probability that things might go up. If 55 percent is the probability that the things might go up. We will have a probability of forty-five percent that the things might go down. All right. So fifty-five percent multiplied by ten dollars. Right now, I'm trying to cal calculate the expected value. The expected value is nothing but the probability into the payoff. Likewise, we'll look out for the payoff in the lower side as well, or the expected value in the lower side as well. That would be point four five into zero. All right. It would be nothing but zero. This particular value divided by Now see this number that we are going to calculate will get it at time period one. We need the value of the call option at time period zero. So what we need to do is we need to discount things for one year's time period. So that would be one point zero seven. So point five five into ten dollars. That would be point five point five plus zero. So nothing here uh, divided by one point zero seven. So you finally get the value as five point one four. So according to the binomial model, if we are looking out for a call option uh, on a particular stock which is trading at a which which is trading at thirty dollars currently and has a strike price of thirty dollars, all right, we can expect the call premium or the call price to be somewhere around five point one four dollars. All right, so this is how exactly you can work it out for call option for a single period binomial model. Likewise, you can do it for put option as well. Now, say for example, in the very same question. Uh, all the things are very similar. You have U as 1.33, D as 0.75. Uh, the exercise price is at $30. The stock price is $30. You are looking out for the value of a put option. All right, looking out for the value at uh, for the put option. Now you need to see that the strike price is $30. All right, the long put person gains when they when things go down. So he'll not be gaining anything here when the price hits $40. So here his payoff will be $0. But he'll be gaining a lot of money here. When things go down, and his payoff would be seven point five dollars. Now, what he needs to do is find out the expected value at time period one using the probabilities and the payoffs, and then bring them back to time period zero. So the answer would be fifty five percent into zero dollars plus forty five percent into seven point five dollars. All right. So in this particular case, we'll have this value as zero, and we'll have a value here. And again, we'll be dividing it by 1.07 because we need to bring things back to time period zero. So the answer would be 0.45 multiplied by 7.5. That is 3.375 divided by 1.07. You'll get the value of the put option. That would be 3.15. All right. So in case if somebody uh, is willing to buy a put option with an exercise price of thirty dollars, which is trading at thirty dollars right now, with all these numbers, that is the risk free rate at seven percent and the up factor at one point three three and the down factor at point seven five, the person will have to pay somewhere about three point one five dollars to buy that particular put option, and the person who is selling this put option might expect to receive a premium of somewhere about three point one five dollars. So this is how exactly you know you calculate uh, the value of a call option or a put option, which is nothing but the premium amount which The person is supposed to pay or receive given whatever uh, position he is taking, long position or the short position, and based on that we have these numbers. Uh, for the put option, we have three point one five dollars. Right now, we did it for European options. The ex uh, the exercise was being taken place only at time period one uh, at the expir expiration. Uh, fu in future, we'll be looking out for European options with two two year time period model, and at the very same time for for American options with again multiple years uh, as the time framework. All right. So this is how you work things out, uh, and it is it is nothing new. It is just a recap of what we started in level one. So that is why I went a little fast. I hope you must have understood it. In case if you did not, uh, feel free to book office hours uh, so that we can interact upon the same. Thank you.